Hey, good morning. Well, today's Halloween, and as a part of the Exposing the Darkness series, today we're going to be talking about um, casting out demons. I'm going to share some personal testimonies and also answer the question on whether a Christian can be controlled by a demon or not. Um, first of all, I just want to read, uh, reiterate the title verse of this series, which is Ephesians 5.11, which says, um, and have nothing to do with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. So in that vein, this video also resides and we'll be exposing some darkness. Now the first question, are Christians supposed to cast out demons? And the answer is yes, we all are supposed to cast out demons. Casting out demons was one third of Jesus's ministry, healing the sick and casting out demons. Um, demonization is really common many people are under the influences of the demons um ephesians 2 says that uh before you were a believer you were under the the power of the spirit of the air which works in the sons of disobedience which is satan so you were under the sway of satan before coming into christianity you're open to so many different demonic controls and demonic strongholds and influences so um Jesus, when he came to earth, he just goes around and starts casting out demons. He even casts out demons in synagogues, which for the people of God at that time was, would be insane for them to expect that in a synagogue there could be people who follow Jewish customs but still had the control of a demon, or uh, being under the control of a demon. So, to uh, I just want to read a scripture to, to, from Jesus' own mouth that the believers are supposed to cast out demons. So in Mark 16, after his ascension, uh, after his resurrection, right before his ascension, he says um, in 16, um, 15, he says, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe is, will be condemned. These signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So right there, Jesus is saying, go out into all the world and uh, make disciples of all nations, preach the gospel. He says, um, this, these are the signs of those who actually believe me. The first thing he lists, in my name they shall cast out demons. So every Christian should be doing this. It is part of the Great Commission to go and expand the kingdom of God and to rescue people from the control of demonic forces. So um, I'm going to be sharing some testimonies of just that, casting out demons. And it's not to draw attention to me. It's to expose how it actually is, how, how common demonization is. And before I go into it, I want to establish one more point of all the people that I'm going to be sharing about today were, were Christians who had a demon cast out of them. And so I wanted to ask the question, or raise the question, can a Christian be demonized or come under the control of a demon? A lot of people will say no, but the scriptures teach and show something else. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul says in verse two, I am jealous for you with godly jealousy, for I have betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin, virgin to Christ. But I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit, which you have not received, or a different gospel, which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. Right here, Paul, he goes on to teach about discerning false false leaders in the church versus true leaders in the church he even says that satan will appear as angel of light therefore it's no surprising thing that his ministers would would try to appear as ministers of righteousness but he says something in in verse four here that i just read that for if he who comes preaches another jesus whom we have not preached or if you receive a different spirit than the one you have received um that you have not received what he's saying is there are many jesuses being preached there are many false gospels being preached and there are many spirits trying to gain control of you trying to demonize you and he's writing to christians and he's saying i am like i am godly jealousy for you that you would even put up with false gospels false jesuses and receive different spirits than the holy spirit so that does definitively tell us that christians can receive 
a different spirit than the Holy Spirit. These are Christians who have been baptized in the Holy Spirit by Paul and Apollos and uh, Barnabas and Silas, their own hands, they have received from them the Holy Spirit. So they've already received the Holy Spirit. And Paul is saying that you can receive another spirit and you're putting up with it. He even, in uh, another place in Corinthians, in the same letter, he says, now concerning spiritual things, I don't want you to be ignorant. No one speaking by the Spirit will say Jesus is accursed. So he's distinguishing some things that have been going on in their meetings where demons are speaking through people and they're calling that prophecy by the Holy Spirit. So he's giving a, a real clear litmus test of if you're being led by the Spirit or if you're speaking by demonic spirits. If they're saying this, it's, it's not of God. If you're saying this, it's of God. So that means that you can be a New Testament Christian, baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit, and still be under the influence of, and even prophesy by demonic spirits. So there's two scriptures there I used to establish that point. So I'm not gonna establish that anymore. A lot of people will fight over that, but really they just don't wanna own up to the fact that people can come under the control of demons at any point in their life, and it's based on free will. So, um, Again, real quick plug, don't celebrate Halloween. You're just, you're, it's a tradition of man. God, we already talked in the last video or last couple videos that God doesn't care for traditions of men and it's not an excuse for before him to practice traditions of men and um, that compromise the word of God. And the word of God teaches us to be holy and to not eat of the table of demons and the table of the Lord, but just be pure with the Lord and don't um, defile yourself in the spirit or in the body. Anyway. So, now it's time to share some spooky stories about casting out demons. Um, so, uh, casting out demons is something that the Lord's been using me for about a year and some change, maybe a year and a half now. Um, before then, it wasn't completely normal for me to operate in that gift, although I knew it, you know, functioned. Um, but over the summer of 2021, I started really focusing on abiding in the presence of the Lord. I started praying and fasting more than ever. And then God used me, started using me to cast out demons out of people. He'd even send me places uh, to like a bookstore to pray for somebody to be deliver of a demon. He, and I just kept, you know, at the grocery store, he would send me to somebody who needed demons cast out. And um, so one of the biggest things that surprised me is that mostly that I've dealt with is Christians. Um, which made me go into the scriptures to search more into the things that I just read to you. Um, so in Acts chapter 8, we have Philip preaching the gospel, and it says he baptized them in the Spirit, did signs and wonders, many were healed, he cast out demons, and they were baptized in water, right? Um, if the rest of those things, getting baptized in water, repenting of their sins, seeing miracles, getting healed, cast out demons, then why would he actually cast out demons, right? It's, it's something that is necessary for us to undergo th when we come to Christ so that we can be cleaned out. <laughs> it's not necessarily just accomplished by us repenting and ba getting baptized in water. So I just say that to say, if you haven't had a demon cast out of you, or if you haven't had any experience like that when you came to salvation, there's a good chance that you might, have, might still be under the influence of a demon in some way. One of these cases, uh, a Christian came up to us at one of our uh, worship nights downtown um, and she said that she was dealing with a demon of lust uh, or dealing with lust and really needed prayer about it. So Marley and I prayed and I could tell nothing happened. I could tell she could, she felt like nothing happened. And, if, and I felt, you know, the Lord tell me that this is a spirit. And so I suggested that to her and she, she agreed. And so, so we started praying for her to cast out the spirit. And then for the next two straight hours, we just cast out. I mean, 20, 30 demons out of this person. I mean, different faces were coming over, her, you know, um, different personalities speaking to me. Her, she was coughing, hacking, screaming, you know, and this is, kids are running by, <laughs> just casting out the demons of this this person. And um, after about two hours, you know, it was, she felt better. I don't know how to, you know, say that other, elsewise. It even told me that the next day when she saw her mom, her mom out of nowhere just said, man, you look, five years younger and she hadn't told her any of the things that happened and so in that time I learned a lot in those two hours about how demonization works how demons control personality traits they control facial expressions they speak they can speak out of people and that ultimately in the authority of Jesus and I was actually three days into a fast at that time so Jesus you know teaches in Matthew 17 that 
um, prayer and fasting help with unbelief and um, some demons can only come out if we have such a, uh, a removed unbelief cleaned out of all unbelief through prayer and fasting so you know the Lord used me three days into a, just water only fast you know um, you know able to have this supernatural state to uh, flow in, in, in faith and cast these demons out you know without unbelief being present um, so this person was a Christian, a very young Christian, and, and she was getting into some weird stuff, and she was coming out of a lot of things, coming into Christianity. So she needed some a Christian to come along and do surgery in the spirit, and that's what the Lord did that day. Praise God for that. Um, another story, um, someone who, who i known since I became a believer started going to a different church, uh, where they charged you for a healing anointing or something like that. And just this whole thing sounded nasty. I didn't know that this person was coming over for ministry. I thought this person was coming over to visit. She's a really good friend. We hadn't talked in a while. And so when they came over, she communicated that, you know, she was having some problems and that she needed prayer. So we start praying. And 20 minutes later, a demon screaming out of her. No, no, I hate her. I'm not coming out of her. I hate her. Ah! Like screaming. My kids are in the other room. This is why my kids don't mind missing out on Halloween because they know demons are real and kids really understand demons are bad. Um, so we prayed for, for like two hours. Didn't see the breakthrough there. Didn't see the demon cast out. I believe I was operating in a lot of unbelief. I, I wasn't praying. I wasn't fasting. You know, I kind of fallen off that for a little while. Um, and I believe the demon when it said it didn't want to come out of her for some reason I believe that that meant I couldn't cast it out which faith is what's operating in deliverance so don't believe demons they're liars Satan is a liar um, anyway so this person came over for prayer and just 20 minutes later a different thing is screaming out of her um, they weren't aware that they had a demon uh, they came over for just prayer and ministry um, but a demon manifested um, I believe this person received that demon from going to an alternative or going to a fake Christian ministry that is really um, demonic, you know, wolves in sheep's clothes, false prophets, false teachers saying that, hey, just pay us and we'll give you a, a healing anointing and which is not even a thing, you know, we're all anointed by the Holy Spirit to heal. Um, and anyway, so she was, I believe when they laid hands, she received a demon. Um, all right, one more story, and this one's actually really big. I, I've got a scripture that like completely follows with this one. Uh, I was preaching in, in a church, um, and at the end, the Lord told me to pray for healing. Um, and in the New Testament, healing and casting out demons are kind of almost synonymous. He healed the sick and cast out demons. It, Jesus did it all the time, and it was kind of all in one package. And so um, at the end, prayed for this person. Uh, and they start coughing. It's like, okay, there's a demon here. And I commanded it tell me its name, and it said, none of your business. It screamed, none of your business. It's actually on camera on one of my uh, videos on YouTube, uh, Healing and Deliverance Night, right at the end, last 15 minutes. Um, so it screamed, what? Uh, I said, what is your name? And it said, none of your business. And I said, yes, it is my business. I'm a servant of the living God. And it said, no, it's not. And I said, I command you by the name of Jesus to g tell me your name. And it screamed, death. And when it did that, I commanded it to be cast out. When I said that, she flies back on the ground. Flies back on the ground. Um, not She didn't fall. She flies back on the ground. Okay? I didn't push her in any way. You can actually see on camera. I didn't push. It looked like she got pulled off the, the, the screen. And then at that point, I commanded that thing to go. It starts screaming out, Why did you come here? Why did you come here? And if you look in Acts uh, 20, or, um, there's a demon that says, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but you I don't know. So demons, when we actually are consistent in casting out demons, demon hell actually knows who we are. And so this demon was screaming, why did you come here? Why did you come here? And I told it like, I'm a servant of the living God and God sent me, come out in the name of Jesus. Then it did come out. I asked this person, how are you feeling? And she said, I feel Jesus, I just feel Jesus. When she stood up, she said, and something warm is coming over my body. When she stood up, she didn't have scoliosis anymore. And her hand that was restricted before, she couldn't close it. Now she could close it. She looked like a fever broken off of her. She looked like a million dollars. And she said, when that demon went out, 
she said she felt electricity come over her, wash over her body, and then she felt the presence of Jesus. Come on, that is amazing. That's why you cast out demons. She got healed, she got delivered, she got baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so I wanted to read a quick scripture just to, to, just to show how amazing that parallel is. Um, in Luke chapter four, Jesus is in a synagogue, right? I was in a church, right? Um, I'm not saying this to say, look at me, I'm like Jesus. I'm just saying the scriptures are what teach us to interpret correctly. And this, I found in a, a very similar circumstance in scripture. So that's how I know I'm on the right path. So in Luke 4, 31 it says, Then he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and was teaching on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. Now the synagogue in the synagogue there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him and saying, Be quiet, come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in their midst, it came out of him and did not hurt him. And then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, and they gave glory to God, and yada, yada, yada. Um, but it's amazing. It screamed out while he's preaching in a church, and it says, I know who you are. What are you doing with us? And the New, New American Standard said, what business have we with each other? That demon told me it's none of your business. You know, and, it, um, and when he told it to come out, it threw him down before it got cast out. And that's exactly how it happened to this lady. Um, anyway, so I shared just those three quick testimonies to just show you that um, demons are real um, and Christians aren't, uh, Christians shouldn't be demonized, but very much, very well can be depending on what they what they allow in their life, how they focus on things, what they, you know, like I said in the first video, what Jesus says, um, how single their eye is. If their eye is bad, their whole body will be full of darkness. So um, I just give that as an exhortation um, and some spooky stories for you to listen to on Halloween about casting out demons. And I just compel you and urge you, do not celebrate Halloween. Do not celebrate Halloween. It is not a holiday that the Lord likes. It is Satan's holiday. And if you partake of it, you very well are opening up to yourself to these creatures, these demons that will manifest in your life very negatively. So just out of the love of God, I compel you, do something else. You can watch video. I mean, you can pray. You can worship. You can, you can just have a fellowship. Tonight, we're going to a worship night and a bonfire. We're going to pray for the region around us. But we're not going to celebrate the, the occult and the demonic. And this is my last video on the Exposing the Darkness series. I know it's challenged a lot of people, but for, for the Lord told me to keep speaking and do not be silent about this because he's with me, he told me. So the Lord is with this. Um, you can believe it or not, but he told me that he is with this series. And I hope you have been with this series and been liberated from this. And I pray that you have an abundant life and singleness with the Holy Spirit and that you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.